One of the most common questions I see and one I get often is, do I need a CS degree? And the answer to that is no. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why that is. I'm gonna walk through the CS curriculum that I went through and that is currently on offer at the University of Oklahoma. And I'm gonna talk about each class and what you will learn in each class and why or why you don't need that in the end. I'm also gonna talk about the comparison between learning via a CS program versus one on your own as well as some caveats when this may not be true. And then finally some resources if this is really interesting to you and you don't wanna do the traditional college experience, there's a couple things you can do as well. So with that, let's get into it. Okay, before we jump into the courses themselves, I want you to be on the lookout for three general themes in this degree. The first one are topics about the theory of computing. So this is the theory of programming languages, data structures, operating systems, this is the science, so to speak, behind these things that we use in the computing world. Second, there's a lot of just general programming practice and structure. So the idea would be that they would teach you this theory and then you would go and you would practice this by implementing little scripts, little functions, little projects that would allow you to actually do and implement these concepts. So there's this theory side, which is kind of like if you're going to become uh, a doctor, there is the studying of how medicines work, how viruses work, how your body works. And then there's the practical side, which is you know, going into the clinic and seeing patients and treating and practicing diagnosing and finding the right remedies. And so you'll see both of these things in this program. And then thirdly, there is a specific theory or application type course as well. So this is like uh, specifically looking at database theory or network theory or cryptography or special application of one of those subjects. So those are the three things, general theory, general application, and then specific theory or application. Okay, so let's look at this course. I have here the uh, degree plan for the Bachelor of Computer Science for the University of Oklahoma. This is the current curriculum, and this is a little different than the course that I went through, but a lot of it is the same, and they've actually moved some classes from electives into required courses, which I like a lot because they were very important. So starting right here in the freshman year, we've got this Introduction to Computer Programming for Programmers, Java for Programmers, and Introduction to Computer Programming for Non-Programmers. I think when I took this, there was only one option, and it looks like there's three different courses you could take here. I don't think you're supposed to take all three of these at once, but this is basically your first introduction to programming. And I actually would have appreciated this when I went here because I would have taken intro for non-programmers because I had never programmed before, and I was put into a class with people who had been doing Java since they were seven years old. And so I would have appreciated the kind of, you don't know anything, ground up take. But the purpose of this class is mostly application. This is learning about variables and if statements and loops and how to write and compile programs and run them. You're basically writing little snippets or little functions to solve small problems to practice these basic programming concepts. I think the final project for us was a program that would take in an input of an array of arrays representing a Sudoku, and your program had to use a brute force solution to solve the Sudoku. So basically your program would iterate over these arrays and try every single Sudoku number until it found a grid that worked. And it wasn't an easy project, but it wasn't that tough once you kind of played with it for a little bit. And so that's the type of project that you're doing in this class. You're really just learning the very basics of programming. And so this is pretty much all general application. There's not a lot of theory here. Now moving into the second semester, which is programming structures and abstractions. This is starting to introduce a little more theory, but still has a lot of the application behind it. So in this class, you are learning about things like classes and methods and how to structure those types of things. You're learning about inheritance and polymorphism, which are two big words that we probably use every day and don't realize it, but they're just ways to structure um, and share modules of code or inherit behavior or have two different classes perform similar functions or a similar kind of contract on how they work 
or having a similar interface. That's not a user interface. That's a, like a contractual code interface. And so this class introduces a decent amount of theory, but it's also, it's pretty applicable in general, more of this kind of like build and structure these little programs using these ideas. Okay, moving into sophomore year, first semester. This data structures class may be the most important class in the CS program, but it is a lot of theory. It's a lot of theory and it's also a decent amount of application, at least for the one that I took. But this is the theory behind data structures. It talks about the description of them, what is an array, what is a linked list, what is a heap, what is a stack, what is a graph, what is a B tree. And it talks about how these things are laid out and described in memory or on disk and some of the trade-offs between those things. So you may be aware of the difference between an array versus a linked list. Based on how these things are physically stored in the computer, they have different properties. Some of the ways you access or create or update an array are faster or slower than a linked list based on how these things are stored in the computer. The way we store them gives them different attributes because in the end, when you have to go fetch this data, there is a physical cost to that. And if the data is all laid out in one location, like an array would be, that's different than say a linked list where the data could be in several different places. So there's trade-offs. There are times when an array is more useful, there are times when a linked list is more useful. And so this is about the theory of these structures the trade-offs and then how you physically make them and what they contain um, within themselves within the computer. So this is a pretty big class. There is a decent amount of application as well. I know in this particular class, unlike the first two where we use Java, in this one they introduced C++ and so there's a, a definite learning curve there of how to use C, C++, pointers, the standard library, all these types of things were took a lot of effort and uh, time to learn and become at least somewhat proficient in. You'll also see in this semester a class called discrete structures or discrete mathematical structures. So this is a CS class or a math class. And this class is pretty heavily focused on the theory. And what you learn in this class is a lot of like Boolean logic, a lot of set logic, a lot of ways to manipulate logical structures and change them from one form into another. And so this is very heavily theory based. You do get some practice of Boolean operations because you're doing a lot of this A and B or C and not A or not A or B. And so you get these kind of like little equations of like ands and ors and nots and you, you know, you have to flip them around and s simplify them down into different structures or change them into equivalent structures. And so there's a little bit of Boolean practice here, but for the most part, it is pretty much all theory based. Okay, moving into the second semester of the sophomore year, first class on top, computer organization. This class is focused on the theory and the building of basic computer parts. So it starts with building logic gates like and or or and binary addition, binary subtraction, um, shifting binary digits around. And it builds up from that level to building very simple logic gates. So like what happens when you have two ands or together with a not? And how does this play out on like a chip level? And so part of this class is a lab where you build these little logic gates. And so you build these little, little circuits, very, very small, very simple. Um, where you've got two AND gates and an OR, or an AND and an OR, and an exclusive OR, and you're kind of proving out these little like Boolean logic concepts. I think we also might have had our final project was in something close to assembly, where we had to kind of write this stack of instructions, doing all these kind of like bit calculations, uh, but I don't remember too much about that. The next class here is Principles of Programming Languages, and this one is almost entirely theory. This is the theory of programming languages. How do you uh, write a compiler? How do you write a parser? How do you break a, the code that we write 
into an abstract syntax tree, how does the computer take our code and parse it out and know what operations and what instructions to do? Uh, this is incredibly theory-based and there's really not any practical application unless you were going to write your own programming language or your own compiler, uh, but basically no general programming practice here. Okay, moving into the junior year. We have Introduction to Operating Systems, a software engineering course, and the theory of computation. Intro to Operating Systems was a big course in the program. It was kind of almost a weed out course because there was a lot of information and it was a fairly tough class. It was based on the theory of threads and concurrency in a processor. So if you have your CPU chip, how does it portion out little bits of work for all these little processes that need to get run and in what order do you do them and how do you deal with a deadlock or threading issues and it was done the projects were done in C++ or C and so that kind of gave it an element of difficulty on that level but it was also about the theory of processing and memory management and scheduling and dealing with IO and all these other kinds of things and so very heavily theory based, but a little bit of practical application in that there were some pretty tough projects where you had to do some decent programming work. This software engineering class, I'm not totally sure what this is. I know we had, there's two classes in this degree plan that I didn't see that I had. And one of them was like a logic class, uh, something where you're taking logical proofs, again, Boolean type stuff and trying to prove a conclusion or change them to one form or another. So this could be something like that. It could just be a totally different, more broad application course, but I'm not totally sure what this is. Theory of computation, uh, as it sounds, was all theory. It is about the theory of state machines, of combinatorics. So if you have 10 things that can each choose 10 things, how is that different from 10 things where every time you choose one, it's removed from the pool. So it's all theory, a little math based of the complexity of these types of things. And it was probably my least favorite class because I felt like the teacher was not doing very well explaining things. And it was just all theory and very little application. So not my favorite class. And I don't think I've ever used any of the knowledge from it. I'll come back and talk about electives at the end, but we can, but there is one CS elective here in the second half of the junior year. And as we've seen so far, this coursework is pretty locked down. So there's an elective in this second half of your junior year. There's one in your senior year, first half, one in your senior year, second half. So three choices, everything else is required. So there's not a lot of wiggle room here. Okay, moving on to the final year, senior year, first semester, we have computer security, we have algorithm analysis, and we have database management systems. So computer security was not a course when, um, when I was there. I did look up the syllabus, and it looks like it is based on um, kind of like the basics of cryptography and how to exchange and store uh, secrets and keys in a way that's secure. So that's interesting that that's now required course load. There's algorithm analysis, um, which was also a very tough class. Algorithm analysis is taking all of those things you learned in data structures. So like arrays and linked lists and graphs and analyzing the trade-offs between different actions. So like when you update one of those things, when you delete from it, when you need to sort these things, how does that play out? Some structures are really good at some stuff and really bad at other things. And then even within things like sorting, there are fast sorts and then there are slow sorts. And that can also depend on the type of data. If your data is very ordered or if your data is very sparse, like those types of things affect the sort and affect the performance of the algorithm. And so this class is basically all theory on how to um, process and make determinations about how efficient on like an 
order of magnitude how efficient an algorithm is. So the final one in the senior year first semester, database management systems. This was an elective when I took this uh, degree program, and this was an elective that I took. And I'm glad that they made it a required course because database, basically all of the internet are two databases talking together. And we, you know, we put applications and servers and interfaces on top of that, but it's really just data being sent back and forth. And so I really like that this is now required. Um, database management systems is about the, a little bit about the theory of how to structure, properly structure a normalized data set, which is very useful for your everyday life. You use that all the time, especially as a backend engineer. And it's also a little bit of practice around getting some projects to do those structurings. So this is also one of the more useful courses in this program. Okay, finally, the last semester, last year, second semester, we have the capstone project. This one for me was an interesting class. We had to pick our own project to do, but we had to do it in Lisp, which is an interesting language if you've never heard of it. Everything is like basically parentheses and wrapped in parentheses. So it's kind of like a recursive, like every statement returns something which calls another statement which returns something else. And it's just like, it's like if you took your entire program and made it into one giant statement, you just like wrapped all the function calls around everything. So we had that class. Um, I think it was also supposed to be a little bit about the planning and structure of those things, but yeah, overly not very useful, but some some programming practice, and yeah, that's about it. The other thing that's in here that is now required, which was not required when I took it, is this network programming, which is probably a good idea. I don't know if this includes um, like APIs and talking across the network, or if this is more like how do you send packets and how do you determine if packets have been altered and those types of things. But it is interesting that this is now a required class. Here you have an elective, and then that's all the CS specific courses. And so now I'm gonna take a second and talk about all the electives of which you get to choose three. So real quick, artificial intelligence, introduction to robotics, machine learning, computer graphics, human computer interaction, I'll come back to that one. Distributed OS, data networks, compiler construction, computational methods, computer architecture, scientific computing, cryptography, special topics, which I don't know what special topics is. I wonder if that's like a research thing. Like you partner up with uh, a faculty member to do research. So the electives that I took were database systems, which is now in the degree plan. I took cryptography, which was about the theory of cryptography. So how do we create, which now in the blockchain world is maybe a little more interesting, but how do we have, you know, how does SSL actually keep things secure? How do we use things like the RSA encryption algorithm? How do we use elliptic curves to actually encrypt or decrypt data? And this was incredibly theory-based and almost no like actual application and but it may be more interesting or maybe uh, being adapted in the, in the blockchain world. One that I took as a required course, which is now an elective is human computer interaction. And this was an interesting course. It was kind of a grab bag of different things. It was the theory of computing. So going back all the way to the very first uh, computers ever made, the analytical engine talked about Alan Turing and John von Neumann and uh, the computers used in World War II to crack the Enigma code and all those kinds of things. And so it's like some he uh, history of how the computer, and it even went back as far as like the printing press really started there, started at like the printing press and then like evolved through like radio and TV and then, you know, ARPANET or whatever and all these different things all the way up to our modern internet. And so it was like a history class, but it was also about... Um, some user interaction type stuff. So it talked about, you know, the very first Apple printers and mice 
There's also some theory of user interfaces of like, if a button is like this big versus this big, like, and it's far away or close, like how do those interactions play in? There's also a project here that introduced me to iOS dev where I ended up making a, with a part, with a, a group, we made this like iOS blackjack game. And so that was fun, but it was, it was kind of a weird course overall. It was like a grab bag of theory and history and a little bit of programming. So it's interesting that this is now an elective. Here's the kind of like specific application that I was talking about. So if you really are interested in, you know, blockchain or um, computer architecture, if you thought that like building all the little logic gates and like building a little mini processor was cool, like this, this would be like the next level for that. And same with OS and any of those kinds of things. So these are the three that you get to pick are really just kind of based on your interests or where you think you might use it. Okay, so now let's talk about in summary, this whole degree plan. So like I said, there's really three different kind of categories. There's theory, there's practical application, and there's specific theory or application. And so when you're talking about being a average everyday programmer, the thing you take most from this is the practical application. So there were hours and projects that I had to go program to fulfill these projects. And so I kind of had like forced practice of these things. And I was implementing these theories that we talked about, but what I was really gaining the most out of is I was being forced to program having never programmed. And so when I left this degree program, I left with basically the skill level of a boot camp graduate. And maybe not even that, honestly. And I didn't even see it in this degree program, but especially when I wasn't there, there was no real talk of the web at all. There was nothing about, you know, building a web page, nothing about the statelessness of the web. There was nothing about APIs or how to communicate with them. You know, there's definitely no like web framework or CSS framework or JavaScript or anything like that. Uh, everything we did was in like Java or C or C++. And it was all about, you know, building an executable file or a script that you can run at your terminal. And there was a little bit of like GUI programming where we built like a little interface, but nothing web-based. And so when I got my first job, I had a ton to learn about the web because I had not been exposed to it at all. So to compare this degree program to learning by yourself, my main takeaway is that the thing that you get from this degree is you get some programming practice and you get some fundamentals. Now, of course you come away with some theory, but the problem is all this theory has been baked into the tools that you use. So when you use an array in JavaScript, or if you're in another language that has a linked list and you use that, you're not thinking at that theory level. Someone else has already done that and they've made the library and they've handed it to you and they say, here's an array and you don't care. In some languages, you may have an array, quote unquote, that's actually implemented by a linked list. And yes, you might want to know about that, and that could affect some performance decisions, but all these things like sorting algorithms and even things like graph traversal, you're probably just using some library that someone who is very smart and has studied these things well, or a group of people in the open source world have already done all this work and absorbed all this theory and made these libraries for you to use. So maybe I am biased and I'm actually using some of this theory, you know, subconsciously or I'm not realizing it, but I honestly think that I don't use this theory in my everyday life as a programmer. You don't need to, and that's probably a good thing. It's better for a person or a group of people to figure this stuff out and give us all the tools so we're all not, think about how little we would get done if we were thinking down to the binary level every day or building little logic gates before we could write our web applications. We wouldn't have the web. That's kind of the beauty of you know, the computing world is everyone makes these little pieces and gives them to you. I don't reinvent and create the browser and the operating system from scratch. I just download it and I start using it. And so when I say you don't need a CS degree, is because you don't need this theory. Someone else has already figured out all this theory and they've given you all the answers and it also just does not come up. Now, there is one little caveat here of if you are working for or wanting to work for, let's say, 
Amazon and you're working on their routing algorithms, or let's say you wanna work for Google and you wanna work on searching these massive amounts of data, or you wanna work for Tesla on driving cars. There might be some theory there that is either needed or required or extremely helpful. If you're dealing with you know, a self-driving car, that probably involves graphs to some extent. How do I get from node A to node B with these different considerations? If I'm doing you know, package routing for algorithm, that's probably also graphs. That's probably also um, dealing with these efficiency things of how do I sort these things? How do I move through these data structures in the most efficient way? But if you're not doing that, you just call dot sort on your array and someone else has already decided if it's bubble sort or quick sort or whatever. So that's why I say you don't need the CS degree. You're really just getting a lot of practice in a head full of theory. And so I guess my point is, if you're going to spend four years and thousands or tens of thousands of dollars, would you bet on tens of thousands of dollars in four years or your ability to teach yourself? I think every day more and more, the answer weighs even more heavily towards teach yourself. The amount of free resources, the amount of things you can do at your own speed, at your own lifestyle with almost no cost is growing every single day. And so that's why if someone asks me, should I get a CS degree to go program? Most of the time I'm gonna say, just go learn to program. Now, with that being said, there's a couple reasons why you may want to get a CS degree and I do wanna mention those. Number one is you may want the college experience. So moving aside from CS completely, the college experience is something that some people could want. And if we look at this degree plan again, you know, there's math courses, there's English, there's these physics labs, there's history, there's non-Western civs, there's all these kinds of extra things that you may want to be um, exposed to. There's also the general college experience of being on college campus, have, making friends, being in the dorms, you know, having, you know, some of the most freedom you've had, but it's also structured. So like you may say, I'm not a good self learner. I really want the college experience. And so go to college. That's totally fine. But there's obviously a cost there and there's obviously time that has to be spent there. Uh, the other reason you may want this is because it may be required for the job you want. So the reason I have a CS degree is because I was looking at doing a security master's at a university that required either a bachelor in computer science or a bachelor in math. And so to apply for that program, I had to have a CS or a math degree. So I got the degree. Um, that being said, also 10 years ago, the having the piece of paper that said you had a CS degree was almost like a gatekeeping mechanism to where it, your resume would not even be looked at to get the job if you didn't have it. I think that has largely gone by the wayside today, which is also why I tell people they don't need to get it. As people have started to realize, like, we have all these college graduates with CS degrees who don't know anything, and we have all of these boot camp people who know how to do the work that we need to hire them to do. And so people are starting to realize, like, this piece of paper really does not mean that you're a good candidate. And then finally, if this seems interesting, if the things that I described to you seem cool and, like, you want to learn them, then go learn them. Having a CS degree will definitely not hurt your ability to program, but my overall point is that it is not required and it is not necessarily the most efficient way to learn how to program or to get a programmer job. Now, finally, there are other resources out there aside from college that you can use to learn this stuff. Obviously, there's YouTube. I think if you typed in any of these course names or any of these subjects like polymorphism, or big O notation, or graph traversal, or B trees. There's gonna be amazing content for free on YouTube for that. There's also, I haven't taken it myself, but I've heard and seen that when the Stanford CS course is running, I believe that that is also put up online for free. So you could follow the lectures totally for free for their course as well. And then finally, there's a book called Imposter's Handbook written by Rob Conry. And it is him detailing pretty much all of the computer science concepts in a really great and easy way to understand it. And so if you're like, I really want to know these things or people at my work, they keep talking about big O notation. They keep talking about 
uh, bee trees or something, uh, you could go buy that book and learn it that way. But I think there's also, you know, an infinite amount of free resources as well. In conclusion, you, a CS degree is not required to program. It could be useful. I would argue that it is not the most efficient way to learn to program. And if you don't have it, even if you run into these issues, let's say you're working and someone says like, oh, this is really inefficient. This is uh, O of N squared. And you're like, I have no idea what that it is. Go look up big O notation and take 10 minutes to learn it. And then you learn it. And that saved you four years and thousands of dollars. So I hope I've convinced you that you don't need a CS degree. It is fine to have one if you want it, but it's not required. So happy programming.